The POCC International Ambassador Franco, he is also an instructor at UC Berkeley and he organizes internationally. POCC is a huge organization and as he said before, please feel free to sign up in the back and join us on our mission. Um, Franco, you ready? Give it up for Franco. Before I say anything, let me mention uh, my comrade JR got up here. He mentioned everybody's cases, but he forgot to mention his own. I think that was probably intentional, but he is fighting a case right now. Um, his next court date is Thursday. I think it's the 28th. Can you hear me? Better? Minister of Information, JR, my comrade that was just up here, he's got a court date also. Uh, he's fighting the case. We need everybody to come out and support. Um, you can get the information for that um, on uh, sfbayview.com. Um, I'm going to read a short passage from the book today. Um, but I think uh, everyone who's ever had the opportunity to hear Mumia speak or read any of his work, um, All right. Um, everybody who's ever had the opportunity to hear Mumia speak or read any of his work, uh, you know he has a way with words. So despite uh, the fact that what I'm going to read is real brief, I think if we stop and unpack it, uh, there's an the opportunity to, to learn a lot. So I'm reading uh, from the second chapter, which is on page 52. And Mumia says here, for prisoners, it is not necessary to philosophize about the law. The law is as real as steel and as hard as brick. It is not a theory nor an idea. It is grim reality. And while we are often told about the neutrality of the law through discourses that claim equality, daily lives lived behind prison walls reveal quite another reality. Now, Mumia is uh, someone who I personally admire uh, for so many, so many reasons. Um, as I said, he's someone who's so knowledgeable, someone who's so brilliant, um, also his charisma. Um, first time I ever had the opportunity to talk to him was in the context of an interview. We were doing an interview with him, and here he is locked in a dungeon somewhere, and he's stopping to talk to us and asked us how we, we were doing, checking in with us. And that's something that always uh, stuck with me. But what I've always admired Mumia the most for is his courage. Um, and it's his courage in the face of this reality that he's talking about in this passage which I want to talk a little bit about. Because I think, because Mumia is so brilliant, uh, because he's so charismatic, uh, sometimes we can get lost in his eloquence. Sometimes we can forget um, that he is locked in a cage. I think as Kuwa said earlier, you know, when you hear him on the radio, you might think he's in a Buddhist temple somewhere. Um, so we really need to stop and think about uh, the circumstances which he, which he finds himself in. Um, Tupac has a saying in, in one of his songs where he says, you ain't got to be in jail to be doing time. And I think we all know that's true, not just the theoretically, um, but through our personal experiences, we know the, the tentacles of the state reach far beyond the prison walls. Um, but for those of us who've had the misfortune of being kidnapped by the state, those of us who have had those handcuffs slapped on your wrist, you know it's a whole nother ball game, right? You know, as Mumia says here, it's quite another reality. And as Mumia's work, within this context that we need to stop and think about to understand its true significance. Um, it's not just that they're trying to completely dominate him physically, right? It's not just that they have uh, a fence with the wire razor, with the electrical gate, with a guard tower, with a pig in the guard tower, with the rifle, uh, with, with, the, with the, uh, the bullets for the rifle, with the, the, the concrete, with the cages, right? It's that it goes actually beyond that to the point where they actually have waged psychological warfare and have built it into the actual architecture of the building. So in the camps, they actually paint the, the walls a specific color to keep the, those who are held captive in a certain mood. Uh, they have the, light, the lighting arranged a certain way because they study this, right? Sensory deprivation. They know that they can control your mind through the way they have the lights set up in the prison, right? This is the context that Mumia finds himself in, and yet is putting out work like this, right? Um, I had a comrade, a comrade of mine one time told me, he asked a man Musa, those of you know, uh, might know a man Musa from Masha al-Islam, he asked a man Musa, he said, uh, you seem so fearless. Um, 
you have all this courage, yet, you know, you're out here in the streets every day, the state's trying to lock you up, they're throwing all this stuff at you. When in your life did you get to the point where you became fearless like this? And he said, a man Musa told him, I got that way through my experiences in the hole, right? He said, in the hole, when you're locked up in prison and you're in the hole, in the shoe, you get to the breaking point. And when you get to the breaking point, he said, you're either gonna survive or they're gonna break your mental. He said, when you survive, he said, you get to this point where you become fearless, where you know there's nothing else they can do to you, right? And this is the true significance of Mumia, right? We need to stop and think about what he goes through concretely on a daily basis, right? They tell him, well, if you say you did it, we won't execute you, right? If you stop all that political talk, we'll give you a little better treatment, right? But this is someone who puts his own personal survival and placed it secondary and put his own politi his political objectives and, and, and he, the rest of us out here first, right? He's reached a point so it doesn't matter what they do to him, even if they execute him, he's willing to die for that, for truth and for justice, right? And I think this is the, the context that we need to understand Mumia in, in order to understand his true significance. And I'm not saying this so we can be on some kind of hero worship and say, you know, Mumia, Mumia has reached this point that we wish we, we all can get to this higher state of existence. What I'm saying is, for those of us who organize, right? Use Mumia as an example. This is what he means to the movement. When we out here tired, we don't want to get out and pass out propaganda, we don't want to send this last email because we're tired. Think about what he's going through. Thank you. Free more, free more, free more.